Okay, good morning everyone. I am back. Um, in case anyone was wondering, I was in Nashville for last, the last couple days and over the weekend. And <clears throat> back from there, it was a great time. We're going to get right into the stock market technical analysis this morning, kind of show you guys what I'm seeing as of as of this morning. I wasn't able to really trade last week, uh, starting on Wednesday basically, but I did pretty much have all my long positions that I talked about. Uh, we kept, you know, I stayed long triple Q's. I was long Roku, long Netflix. Um, and I'm continuing to see, you know, more signs that the rally is not finished. So I'm seeing, you know, pretty much everything long, especially the high risk, high growth stocks last week, really ripped to the upside. Huge gains in a lot of those. I mean, I think Roku was up. We'll go into that and look how far, how much that was up. But lots of uh, big winners so far, and I think there's a little more to go. So starting off with Triple Q's, a couple patterns, again, that I am just really want to reiterate for this morning is this bullish falling wedge. So that's this big wedge right here, all right? And this is the daily chart, bullish falling wedge right there. That's a bullish pattern. Again, bullish divergence as well. And this is a big divergence. This has been extended for a long time. You can see right there. So on the RSI, it's not so much on the PPO, at least going all the way back here, but definitely on the RSI. And then the PPO has some bullish divergence really starting right in this area. Uh, but the divergence on the RSI is telling me that this rally has the potential to last weeks to months, basically, you know, maybe all of summer, it's possibly, we might just kind of grind on low volume, grind around and rally uh, through the summer and then continue to sell off in the fall. Um, but the levels to watch, we're coming into some minor resistance. If I go to the hourly chart here on triple Q's, you can see this was a former zone of support right here. And we're right there now at three, I got it at 309, it's about 310, 20, 310, 18 or so as some kind of, it's not major resistance, but definitely a little bit of resistance. Also, it looks like there's a little resistance up here at 316. But at the end of the day, the, the next level I've got, and I continue to point out is that 318 area. It's right there, 318. You can see that was a, uh, that's a big level, so I really think that is going to be our target um, for now. Look at this level. If I roll back on the hourly, you can see all the times we hit it. We hit it there as support, rolling in, we hit it there, we hit it there, consolidated on that level for a while right in here. All right, kind of chopped through it a little bit. And so I think we're trading, gonna trade up into that area of resistance. And again, that remains my target. So. Um, that would be, you know, from when we got long, um, I don't remember the exact day I called out going long, but from these lows here, this little false breakdown right here, basically, you know, we're up almost eight, 9% in just a matter of a few days. So pretty significant bear market rally so far. Um, but this, is, you know, we could rally a lot more. Okay. Bear market rallies can run 30%, you know, 50% depends on what stock it is but we can have a, a lot more here. So I'm continuing to look for more upside. We need to kind of take out today's highs and that should move us up to 318. I don't see any indication that we're not gonna get that. Um, one, one thing you could watch, looks like on the hourly, we've started this uptrend right here. So I kind of marked it out on the hourly chart. So any pullbacks to that trend line, something like that, that'd be about 298. Um, any pullback down to there, potentially down to this 300 area, somewhere right there, those will be areas to buy. So it, you could do that. We could see a pullback, hit, hit that uptrend line, and then continue on to, our, to this next level, 318. That's what I'll be watching for. Okay, SPY. So, and I don't trade SPY. For the most part, I trade the triple Qs, but SPY continuing to rally. The resistance level that I see on this one is about 411. You can see I've got that marked out as former support here and here. Um, a little bit right in there as well. And then we hit it as resistance there and we're above it. We had kind of a breakout and we're above it. So far today they came down, held that support and we're still above it. So that sets us up for a move up to 429. Uh, and then the 200 days just you know up here at 444 and we have this downtrend line a potential downtrend line started off the all-time highs there got one tag of it so the rally could bring us up it's not going to be probably straight up but 
Maybe we do this, come back, hit, and kind of run up, hit the 200 and hit this downtrend line in the future um, in the next weeks to months. And that would be probably the most objective area to short again. All right. Again, I just want to reiterate, I'm... I'm reading this rally as a bear market rally. For one thing, you see how impulsive this rally is. This is what bear market rallies feel like. Very impulsive, very strong rallying. Um, we are in a downtrend. We are making lower highs and lower lows. Obviously here on the SPY, we topped out here. We're making lower highs. So I would assume we make a lower high and we're making lower lows, all right? So downtrend line, uh, downtrend is intact. This is likely a bear market rally. We're gonna treat it as such until proven otherwise. But again, I still think we've got probably a little more to go with uh, with the rally. So looking for higher prices. And on another thing to look at here, um, you can look at the hourly and we've got, you know, like this uptrend line basically we've created. So pullbacks to that trend line there will likely get bought and we should continue higher. Okay, before I change off these indices, I want to just go to the monthly chart here, primarily on triple Qs, but I want to show you, this is the monthly chart going all the way back to 2009, and this is your bull market. This is the market, you know, for the most part, most of the strength over the last bear, this last 12 years or so has been in the FANG stocks. I think they've contributed to something like 20 or 30% of all the gains, maybe more, but um, so again, this is your bull market in in the in the stock market and as you can see i've kind of got the the lows the support lines marked out on the monthly chart here now when we broke this trend the fed took action both times so we broke here the fed took action december 2018 we broke here that's your COVID drop the fed took action so clearly this trend line holds water um, because it, it engages the Fed each time it's broken. As I zoom in, and it'll probably look kind of messy, but you can see the wick. Intramonth, we were way down here, um, breaking down, selling off, and just, um, you know, way below that trend. But, you know, today's the last day of the month, and over the last week, they've stepped in and bid it up and recovered the trend line. So that's, again, what I'm saying is bigger picture. Until this trend line breaks, we can't get too bearish. You know, we did, we were, I was, you know, anybody on this channel, we were successful trading from the high way up here, shorting it at like 294 all the way down to the trend line. That's a huge gain. And if you roll out and look at that drop is pretty much the biggest drop you're going to see in triple Qs since the Great Recession. So we were successful at capturing gains that you don't normally see until you're in bear markets. And we haven't seen downside gains or a sell-off that strong since back, you know, in 2008. So congratulations on that. But again, down here at support, we've recovered the support line. We probably rally here. And again, I'm marking that 318. There is the potential to rally up to probably even 330. All right. I don't think we're going to go much beyond that, but I think 330 would be another potential target. Um, so we'll just keep an eye on that. Okay, oil. So oil continues to rally. I'm seeing signs of definitely a short setup, but we don't have an actionable trade yet. So I'm not interested in shorting oil yet, but here's XLE. This is kind of the... Uh, you know, like Exxon Mobil and stuff make up a big part of this. Some of the big oil companies. Um, negative divergence on the RSI here. All right. Not fully confirmed, but definitely there for right now. And we have negative divergence on the PPO. All right. Again, not fully confirmed. If I can quit moving my chart around, but definitely there. So we're looking for confirmations on those divergences and we'll look for those to start to play out. I've got on the hourly chart here this kind of secondary trend line now. So what we'd want to likely do is keep this marked out and then it also looks like oil's kind of going parabolic, but you could mark something like that out on the hourly. You break this trend line, this little minor trend line, we should head down to this more significant trend line. And if we break that, we should start to head down to some of these lower profit targets. Um, and I, I think down here makes sense, 70, 50, good support down there. You can see from, from that level, uh, you've got, that's former resistance right through here. Then it was support 
and support. So again, it's kind of a waterfall effect. We break one and then we look for the break of the other, but that's kind of how I'd set this one up. So I'm looking for breakdowns, but we don't have it yet. We have no significant candlesticks, any kind of reversal charts or anything like that. Guys, if you're interested in learning this as a skill set, if you want to learn the technical analysis tools that I use, if you want to learn kind of a step-by-step -step process, I have a checklist. I put together a stock market technical analysis and trading course, link in the description below. I break each concept out into multiple videos. It's about four hours or so. And then I also give you kind of a step-by-step -step checklist to really help you analyze a trade. Does the trade make sense? Is there a good risk reward ratio to the trade? Does it have all the technicals that we're looking for to give us the highest probability? I can't guarantee anything, but what I can do is give you the skill set that will definitely give you an advantage when it comes to technical analysis and you know these markets. So if you're interested, I priced it at affordable for all. I haven't, you know, I'm not price gouging anyone. I'm not a lot of competitors have courses out there for thousands of dollars. I made it attainable to anybody that's actually interested in learning this as a skill set and not just want to watch my daily videos. I can show you guys trades. I try to point out some key trades and give you guys some good probability, you know, high probability trades when I see them. But at the end of the day, this is a skill set. This is not just watching videos and you need to learn this. So if you're interested, once again, link in the description below, check it out. I think you won't be disappointed. And then DVN looks like another good short setup, not an actionable trade, but definitely a good, decent setup for a short trade, big negative divergence. It's been building for a long time on DVN right here. Not fully confirmed yet on this move recently, but definitely an extension of the divergence that has been in place for a while. And here it is on the PPO. So if those divergences play out, we should see some downside move price action here when, when we get a sell signal. Also, we have a bearish rising wedge pattern. We're on the upper end of the wedge now. This to me looks like a fake out move, like we might break down, but these can run for a couple days maybe. At the end of the day, because we're so close to the wedge, um, I, I would probably, and, and this one's been pretty strong, I, I really wanna see a break of this lower trend line again. We had a break right here, but it was a false breakout, proved to be a bear trap. And so, yeah, we need to see a break of the support. This is coming off October 2020. So this has been in an uptrend for about a year and a half. Um, we're looking for the start of the downtrend. If we break, we will we'll likely head down and check the 200-day moving average, wherever that might fall. Uh, and that might be right here, maybe here at 50-50 uh, or so. But again, not an actionable trade yet. We need to get that sell signal. Netflix. All right. Netflix, again, bullish divergence on both momentum indicators. That's been in place for a while. We've been building that, for, you know, pretty much since it broke, since this gap down, all this lower price action has been divergent lows. So bullish divergence, watching these, we kind of had a mix of a downtrend, but if I go to the hourly, um, this one here is kind of relevant. And then this one, let me get rid of that. And then this one's coming off of that gap down right there. We've since broken up. The main thing that I'm watching now is, you know, and I can probably just get rid of this because I don't need it anymore, but is this uptrend line coming off the lows on the hourly chart. Checks to that, you know, if we run down and hit that, they should be bought up and that's the objective area to go long and buy. And I think we're likely heading up to the gap entry at 246.01 and a potential gap fill at 328.63. Okay, that's a ways up there, but again, this thing's been pretty much demolished. So the selling is probably washed out, you know, and anybody who hasn't sold this thing is probably likely not gonna sell at this point. So you're probably looking at mostly all buyers. So I'm looking for more up prices, you know, higher prices on that one. Okay, Roku, so this trade idea let me get rid of this line right here. But I talked about the potential to buy Roku um, basically right here, all right? That was a tag of this downtrend line. See, I've got it mar marked out. This was support, all right? And I said, this is an area, it's objective to go long right here. If you took that long from the entry point, which I did, it, it, this thing's up 26.5% in a matter of you know four days, five days, basically. So at this point, it makes sense to take profit lock in the gains because we are at resistance. 
Again, this is a bullish falling wedge pattern. So this pattern should break out to the upside, but maybe we get a little pullback, run and fill this gap right here. There's a gap and I'll show you guys that. Um, but again, we're at resistance. So until we get a buy signal or a breakout, there's this is resistance, this is resistance. See all the tags of it? There's kind of another one there and we're right there. So in order for me to wanna to go long again, I need to see a breakout, which is a break of this trend line. All right, nice impulsive breakout. Unless you see that, then we're likely gonna get a pullback here. And where do we go to? Well, let's go down to the hourly chart and you got this gap. I think this came on Friday. So you probably run down and fill that gap, all right? Probably fill that, hold that for a day or two, then rally up, break this and head higher. All right, so that's what I'll be looking for on that one. Again, this one had bullish divergence. I've got that marked out on the RSI and the PPO. So everything we need for you know a, a bigger long trade uh, setup, and we we caught the first part. I think we can probably get that little pullback and then and probably go long. At least well, I'll be looking to go long at a gap fill uh, for a higher move. Um, likely up to here, one thirty nine oh three. Uh, we'll call it that for now. Okay, Zen, this is a short trade idea, and this one is working out nicely as well. Um, we still need to break this support level. We're pretty much at it. It's at 90.87. But let me show you the bigger picture trade that I've been that I talked about on this channel. All right, so here is your March or February 2016 lows. This is your uptrend line here. All right, we recently hit support. We broke support with a big sell signal. All right, that's your sell signal right there. It back tested. I didn't catch it this morning um, and was not able to um, position on this one. But um, this was the objective area right there on that back test of that broken trend line. Sure enough, the sellers are stepping in, smashing it down. Now, the support, there's a support level right here at 90, 95. You can see it's kind of horizontal support. We need to take that out. If we do that, we should set up for our next move lower. I've got support here at 30 or 73.20, another level here at 63, and then another level at 50.90. All right, 50.90 is my final level on this one, and likely where this thing is heading over the long term. Okay. Okay, just to cover commodities, DBA, this is a basket of different commodities. The inflation trade is not going to break. Inflation's not going to come down. I know you're going to hear about it on the media. They're going to talk about it. They're going to say that inflation's peaked and likely peaked. Maybe even if it peaked, it doesn't mean that inflation is going to go anywhere near the real interest rates, which means inflation inflationary pressures will consistently be there. And these are commodities as long as these don't break and the inflation trade is going to continue to remain intact. And that's why we're seeing oil and the ag commodities and everything con continuing to hold up. Prices will continue to rise if um, the commodity prices continue to rise. So just keep an eye on that. We do have negative divergence. So I am looking for a correction in these ag commodities, possibly down to the 1758. I mean, there's there's different levels we'll want to watch. There's kind of another level here, but I am looking for a correction. That correction will most likely be a buying opportunity. So we're, um, I'm not, you know, I'm just watching it for now, but there might be a sell signal soon. And when you get that sell signal, that's when you're going to start to hear about the media saying inflation's over. But the reality is, is that it, to me, it will just be a buy the dip moment and then Commodities aren't going to just go straight up forever. They're going to have corrections along the way. As soon as you start correcting, the media is going to tell you that it's all over. And and then when it, the inflation comes back, they'll just tell you it's all back and everything's, you know, this is why it's back. They don't give you any insight into making actual money. They just tell you what's already happened or what's happening now. And the money's already been made by people could, who could, you know, forecast or at least put the probabilities into where the future goes. And the charts tell us that. Okay, gold. Not much going on in the world of gold. It's just grinding. It's consolidating basically at or near support. Here's gold bullion. You can see we're just kind of right around my trend line. My trend line could be slightly off, but this is the bull market trend line in gold. So coming off on the daily chart off the 2018 area, you can see all the tags. And as I zoom in, I've got it. It's kind of messy, but I'm just trying to point out. And there we are. 
pretty much right in that area. If I go to GLD, this one you can see is, um, if I look at the daily chart here, uh, this one, not sure where my trend line went or I had it, but basically coming off the lows right here, and you can see we're pretty much right about there. Um, you know, this is the start of the upward trend line. We're just, we're still above it. So in general, gold's, you know, it's above the 200 day, just going nowhere for the last couple of weeks. So not a whole lot to cover there. GDX um, below the 200 day, but still above this um, 3140 area. And if I go to the weekly chart on GDX, that's a very important level. All right, this is resistance for many years, all right? 3140, all right, resistance here, resistance here. And then once we broke above, it's been support right there. See it, support, support, little choppiness through here. But again, we're still above it. So there's not much selling taking place once we get below that and each dip below has been bought up. So I think we're gonna hold and continue to rally. Okay, I'm kind of been scanning around looking for anything else that's interesting. Um, small caps, small caps getting to the point almost to resistance. This is kind of interesting, but we're not quite there. You can see small caps, the downtrend started right here. This has been resistance ever since. And we could, you know, I could move it up maybe slightly. But, um, you know, right in that area, I think we proved to get rejected. Right about 192-ish. Right in there, I think we get rejected and that will be the end of the rally in the small caps. Um, but if we break the trend line, the downtrend line, we could easily head up to the 200 day moving average. And then I would watch this level right there at 209. So those are kind of the two key levels for me. It's about 192 and then 209. Uh, we really shouldn't go much beyond 209. If you see stuff starting to print above there, yeah, we're likely not in a bear, you know, not going to continue the bear market, but I, I think we get sold into. So that's all I got for today, guys. Drop me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment on your way out and I'll catch you on the next one.